This is the TP-Link BE3600, a Wi-Fi 7 dual band travel router. In this video, I'm gonna tell you whether I think it's any good and who even needs a product like this. Let's get into it. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech, Everyday Tech for Everyday People. Today we're looking at TP-Link's latest Wi-Fi 7 travel router. Now, full disclosure, TP-Link did provide this to me for free. They reached out to me and asked me if I'd take a look at it. Now they are reviewing this video before it goes up to see if there's any technical inaccuracies, but they have no editorial control. All my opinions are my own. And actually, this is not the first TP-Link travel router they've sent me. They sent me the Wi-Fi 6 version, which, is, which I still think is a great value, a great router. And it's even gotten better with some firmware upgrades. And I'll get into that a little bit later in this video. But I'm going to go over some of the additions and changes they've made with the Wi-Fi 7 version as well. Now, before I get into a tour of this TP-Link router, let's first talk about why you would even need a travel router. And I break this down into three different categories. First, security, convenience, and production. First, the matter of security. Even if you're connected to a public Wi-Fi wi hotspot, this allows you to create your own private network. There's no, just another added layer of security there. So there's a, it has its own firewall, so you have some security there. Then the matter of a VPN service, whether it's a paid service or you have your own private VPN, you can connect this travel router to all those VPN services or your custom VPN. Then the matter of convenience, let's say you are traveling and you have a lot of devices to connect to. So my family has a bunch of iPads. Everyone has, let's say my wife and I have a phone. There's just a bunch of things to connect when we travel to a new place. I basically have to set up all those devices on the travel router. And when we get to a new place, Basically, I just have to connect the travel router to that new connection and all my devices are already connected. Then going back to the matter of VPN, let's say I want to have every device on my VPN, let's say connected to home. I just basically have to connect the travel router to the VPN and all my devices connected to the travel router are already connected to the VPN. Then a matter of production. So if you're, let's say you're doing some live streaming event or some kind of event, involving AV that you need a network connection to, this is a great way to have a setup of your own private network of your production setup. You can just have everything set up before you go on location. And then basically, if you need to be online, you just have to connect the travel router, either via Ethernet or whatever Wi-Fi they have, just to this travel router. You can also connect, of course, to tethering to your phone or other you know, USB modem as well. So this is a great way to set up everything before you go on location. Now taking you through a quick tour of this product, in the front we have the kind of same vent design that we saw in the Wi-Fi 6 version. We have a single LED light here for, it changes different colors depending on different statuses uh, of the travel router itself. And the big change of course here based on, different from the Wi-Fi 6 version is the inclusion of these pop-up antennas. So you can see they're, they're like little wings, but this really has the same design other than these antennas than the Wi-Fi 6 version. Then on the side, we have a little bit different switch here than we have on the Wi-Fi 6 version. This is more of a function switch that we can customize in the admin. And I'll get into the admin later on in this video. We have a WPS button which doubles as a reset button. The other side, we have just more vents. Now on the back, here we have a USB 3 port. This is for connecting to a USB modem, or you can connect to external storage, which all devices can access that's connected to this travel router. Then we have two ethernet ports. We have a 2.5 WAN port and a regular uh, gig LAN port. Now, both of these can be configured in the admin to LAN, uh, LAN ports if you're just only connecting this to the internet via wireless a wireless hotspot. Then we have our USB-C port. It's at five volts at three amps, and I'll get into that in a moment as we compare this with the Wi-Fi 6 version of this, but this is mainly just for power. Let's talk about some of the changes they made 
from the Wi-Fi 6 version. First, as far as physical design is concerned, they're pretty much the same design, but the Wi-Fi 6 version that I have on top is smaller than the Wi-Fi 7 version. And of course, with the Wi-Fi 7 version, we have the antennas that pop up as well. As far as ports are concerned, they pretty much upgraded all the ports. So as far as the USB is concerned, they've upgraded USB 3.0 which makes it really good as far as transfer speeds are concerned if you're doing a uh, mass storage on here. Then as far as the ethernet ports are concerned, they've upgraded one of them to a 2.5 gig WAN port. And of course, again, it can be used as a LAN port. Then the last thing I'll point out is the USB-C power port. Now there is a USB-C power port on the Wi-Fi 6 version, but this has a rating of nine volts, 12 volts. And some I've had issues powering this up with kind of lower end power banks that didn't produce, give enough volts for power. This one is rated at five volts at three amps, which I can use different power banks. And that is actually a big deal because I don't wanna worry about power as far as what I have to bring with me if I wanna power this up on the go. Here we are in the TP-Link admin, and I'm not gonna go through every single detail of this admin, but I wanna take you through a quick walkthrough of what you can do. Now, we have the different areas, uh, kind of an overview page in our network map, the column here, and it gives you our router information. Uh, this is the wireless here is the hotspot or Wi-Fi network that we created for all our devices to connect to. I've already switched it out of the default version of that. I'll get into that in a moment. Then we have, you can enable a guest network. We can see the performance of CPU load and memory usage of the router itself. And we can see what is connected via ethernet. Now I'm not gonna go into the internet section because I, I don't wanna hide, spend the time hiding my network, home network information, but this is where you would connect to a hotspot, let's say a coffee shop Wi-Fi. If we go into wireless, this is where we can change the wireless network that our devices connect to. The D, there is a default SSID and password, and that can be found at the bottom of the travel router itself. And also they give you a little piece of documentation, paper of documentation that comes in the box. Now this is very useful if you have to reset your router if you let's say you forget your password you can reset it it'll put put it to the default and then you can look under the travel router itself to see what the password ssid and password is if we go into home shield here are a few more security uh, things in your router this will do a scan of firmware updates and different things then we have parental controls this is where you can add different parental controls, not only for web filtering, but also time of use on the internet. So let's say you can have certain only certain devices on the internet at certain times. Let's say you don't want your kids sneaking in and trying to go online. This is a place where you can control that as well. Then if we go into advanced, advanced is really where we can change all the settings that we saw up here in the admin, but there are of course more advanced features. We can change how those ports work. We can make these both LAN ports instead of one WAN port. And there's a lot of different settings as well. Now, one thing I'll point out is in the tour of this router, I pointed out that little switch, the function switch, and we can change how that function switch works. And so let's go into our action switch here. And the way I have it set up is when I uh, flip that switch, it turns off the LED, but you can have it turn off the Wi-Fi. You can actually have it connect to a VPN server with the flip of a switch automatically. So that's a very cool function. In the Wi-Fi 6 version of this router, that was a diff that was a changing of modes from access point, hotspot, and router. We can do that up here in this with this shortcut button up here, and we can change the different modes of this travel router. The number one question I get when I do these travel router videos, whether it's through a company like GLINet or TP-Link, is how do I get past the captive portal? And this is a question I'm asked even when I'm doing my own custom travel router with my Raspberry Pi. 
And I'm happy to say that TP-Link, just like GLINet actually, has a special captive portal login. So there's a special way to actually log into a captive portal. Now, what we had to do before was log in with my, let's say my laptop computer first, and then try to go through the captive portal. Then I go to the travel router and clone my MAC address of my laptop onto the travel router. And then it makes it, it basically we're pretending to be the laptop and then it allows us to connect. And when I was doing the review of the Wi-Fi 6 version of this, uh, that's what I had to do. I'm happy to say that I upgraded the firmware on this Wi-Fi 6 and actually the captive portal login functionality is on this now, making this a great value. But here's a demo of me connecting to a Starbucks Wi-Fi, which a lot of you are going to do, or a coffee shop Wi-Fi with a captive portal. A few moments later. But at that same Starbucks, I wanted to do some speed tests to see if there's any slowdown to my internet connection when I use a travel router. And as you can see, whether I use the Wi-Fi 6 version, Wi-Fi 7, or even going directly into the Wi-Fi of the Starbucks, the speed was about the same. It's pretty slow, but at least there's no slowdown when you're adding a bit of security and different layers of network on top of your connection. So what do I think of the TP-Link BE3600 Wi-Fi 7 travel router? I think this is a great product and a great value, especially at its price point. Now, before I get more into this though, let's talk about the previous version, the Wi-Fi 6 version. The model number of this is the TLWR1502X, also known as the AX1500. I think this will still meet the needs of 90% of people looking for a travel router. Now, this, especially with the upgraded firmware, this now makes it something I can definitely recommend, especially at half the price of the Wi-Fi 7 version. Before that firmware, I couldn't really recommend it because I, like many people, go to a lot of coffee shops or a lot of places, public Wi-Fi, with a captive portal, and not having that functionality there was a deal killer for me. But why would you upgrade or why would you spend more money on the BE3600, the Wi-Fi 7 version of the travel router, I would say there is a number of things they, they have done that may have you consider spending a little bit more money. First, the power requirements to power this up, it goes from nine volts down to five volts, which is a big deal for me because I don't have to worry about what kind of power bank I need to bring to power up my travel router. Then there's the upgraded USB port from going from two to three, uh, if you're sharing files on the go, this is a big deal. And for me also, this can read Mac OS files, which is more than I can say from other manufacturers. Then the last thing is, even though I only have one device that has Wi-Fi 7, which is my iPhone 16 Pro, this is really a future-proof uh, kind of feature. And hopefully all the devices, all the new devices I get will come with Wi-Fi 7 and eventually all have Wi-Fi 7. So this is a good way to future-proof all your devices and get the most throughput that you can with these kind of devices. Thanks again to TP-Link for sending this out to me. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Until the next one, see ya.